when you got to preach about something, God takes you through the process. And my wife and I had the, the privilege to be in New York uh, last weekend. She was up there on business, and I joined her for the day. And after we went to church at Brooklyn Tabernacle, how many of you have ever been to Brooklyn Tabernacle with Jim Cimbala? Uh, it's uh, just a, a fantastic church that's been there forever, and it, it was very moving. Not often do I go and get to sit in a church service where I'm not doing something and I don't have any responsibilities. So there was a few thousand people there, and, and I, was, I was sitting there, and God's beginning to speak to me. And I'm like, God, you know, can't you just, like, give a pastor a break every now and then? You know, like, you start seeing things. You ever, does that ever happen to you where you start seeing things? And, and I pray the prayer, Lord, help me to progress in the prophetic but then when he actually does it on his time schedule rather than on my time schedule, I'm, I'm, it's a vacation, Lord. As a follower of Christ, there is no vacation. Okay? And sometimes we put our fingers in our ears and like, blah, 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 you know, I don't want to hear it. And so the, the lady's sitting two over from me. There's no retirement. That's what she says. All right. I'll remind you of that. And... So we're, we're sitting there, and the Lord begins to speak something to me for the lady that was sitting two, two over. And, and uh, so at the end, I just began to, to just minister to her, tell her what the word of the Lord was. And you know, she seemed visibly touched, and, and I thought, okay, good, God, I, I, I got that out of the way. That was the one thing, you know, that I needed to do. Now could I just enjoy the rest of the day? We're going to go to Central Park, and we're going to, you know, have something to eat and things. And God starts doing the same thing over lunch. You know, Eddie, we do the pray for your waitress, and, and the waitress says, uh, no, no, I don't have anything to pray for. And the Lord goes, in my spirit, uh-huh, she does, and shows me what it is. And I'm like, not again, Lord. Vacation, you know, just chill. But he heard my prayer about wanting to progress in the prophetic. So at the end, she takes the check, and, and, and I'm like, Robin, could you just hold on a second? I have something that I need to just share with you. Begin to share with her. It happened again at the soap group at Dunkin' Donuts. After I'm done, you know, we're, just having, we're supposed to be, like, at Dunkin' Donuts having Bible study and things. And God just starts showing you things, and it's like, okay, Lord, I prayed that I would progress in the prophetic, and you're actually taking me up on it. You see how God does that? He like answers our prayers, you know? Isn't that amazing? And so you take those steps of faith, and as, as a Christ follower, can I just encourage you to be that work in progress? Those areas that you're saying, I want to grow in, watch for those opportunities, because God is going to do it through you. I know we're reading through the book of James. How many of you got your reading plan in the uh, uh, bulletin today? Did you get your reading plan? I'm going to be referring back to that. And you might notice on here that James chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is repeated again. It is not a typographical error. But we have it in the New Living Translation, the New American Standard, the NIV, the New King James, and the Amplified. Now, if you do not know where to find those Bibles, you can go online and just Google. I love Google for Bible study, by the way. I would encourage you to use Google for Bible study. Now, there's nothing sacrilegious about that. So you can have a piece of a verse, and you say, I think it's in there somewhere, like cleanliness is next to godliness, or something like that. And so you Google that, and it's not in the Bible, okay? So Google will tell you it's not in the Bible, at least... The Google I use tells me it's not in the Bible. And, and so you can do New Living Translation and read it. You can go New American Standard and read it. Because what we're going to do as we go through the book of James is we're not just going to go through the book of James, but we're going to go through the book of James and learn how to study the Bible at a new dimension. There's a difference between reading the Bible and studying the Bible. You can read the Bible and just read it like a book, 
and it goes in one ear and out the other. At least that's the way it did in high school when I was reading books. I was like, I technically read the book. My eyes crossed every word on that page. So I could sign it at the bottom and at the end and say, I read the book. What it said, I have no clue. That's where I'd go and get the cliff notes and be like, what are they talking about here? Oh, yeah. No, actually, I was even cheaper than that because I would ask the person that bought the cliff notes what the book was about because they read the cliff notes. And then I would be like, oh, yeah, that kind of sounds familiar. First Timothy chapter 4 is the verse that we were using, 415. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. It's on the T-shirts. It's on the banner. Now, what was Paul talking to Timothy about? Go back two verses. 1 Timothy 4.13. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture and to preaching and to teaching. As Christ followers every day, are we living and acting the truth? Are we progressing in the truth? The only way that we can progress in the truth is if we are growing in the transformation of the word of God in our life. I was, um, well, I, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 24 and 25 is quoting, Peter's quoting from Isaiah and he says this, all people like grass and all their glory is like, are like, all people are like grass and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Now, when we were in New York, we went to the 9-11 memorial last Saturday. It was the second time that I'd been there, and I said to Bonnie, you need to come back with me. That is well worth the price of admission to go there and see this. And there was this tree. Are you familiar with the survivor tree, if you've been there? Out of all of this thing, I thought this was the coolest thing. There was a pear tree that got stuck under the rubble when the towers collapsed. And this pear tree was badly damaged. All the other trees were destroyed. This tree had life in it when they uncovered the thing. They took it, they scooped it out, and they took it to a nursery somewhere, nursed it back to health, and brought it and set it back in the ground between the two holes that now represent where the footprint of the towers were. And they call it the survivor tree. And I, the second time I was there, I, I went in the gift shop and I looked at the little survivor tree thing and I was like, no, I can't spend $20 or whatever it was for a, for a coffee mug. But I find this extremely inspirational. That out of the rubble survives one tree. One tree. But how much more the word of the Lord? That tree is going to die again sometime. It's going to get old. It's going to get cut down. It's going to all burn when this world burns up. But the word of the Lord lasts how long? Forever. And has the wisdom and has the power to change you and me. Forever. Now that's worth listening to and that's worth grabbing a hold of. But do we do it? You can say, ouch, it's okay. Sometimes, sometimes we do. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, Paul says, preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. I'm going to make a bold statement here. The height of your progress will be in direct proportion to your grounding in the word. The amount that you can progress will be dependent upon how transformed you are by the word of God. The depth of the roots will determine your ability to move forward. Sometimes I feel like a mama bird. And, and I've had... People well-meaning, and if you're one of them, please forgive me. I don't remember a specific person, so I'm not referring to you. But sometimes I feel like a mama bird. We had a little bird. We had two bird nests in the crook of the uh, downspout, you know, under the eaves, and then one on top of the electrical meter. I was really hoping that they didn't get really hungry and be like, you know, 
peck through the wire coming down. But these mama birds would go out and they would eat. And now this is kind of gross, but they would come back, sit on the edge of the nest, and you'd see all of these little beaks doing this kind of thing. You know, you know what I've seen, the little yellow beaks? And what does the mama bird do? Yeah, she throws up in their mouth, okay? Moms, this is not, you know, this is not a great picture, but sometimes I feel like the mama bird, and the only time that people get fed in the church is when pastor throws up on them for 30 minutes on Sunday morning. Okay? All right, hey, if the shoe fits, just say, ouch, it's okay if I see you. And, and, and sometimes, you know, it's even, it's even great, it's like this. I can tell when you're really hungry for the word because your head's back like this and your mouth is open. You know, that, that really spurs me on as a preacher. It's like, man, they're so hungry. They're so hungry. The word of God, it's just great. Okay, James chapter 1. James chapter 1, you're going to read it four times at least this month if you're doing the reading plan. And I want to kind of break down the first chapter here and in the first few verses, first, verses 1 through 8. And I want to help you to see how we go through this process. Next week we're going to look at this as well on how do you take the truth of Scripture, and run it through the hourglass to the application. Like, what did it mean to these people? And then how do we apply it to our life? Because if you don't go through the proper understanding of what the Scripture is, then you're going to make a faulty application. You're going to take a verse out of context. We'll talk about context and usage a little bit. Because I want you to be able to feed yourself. Did you get that responsibility? I want you to be able to feed yourself. All right, Bob, I'm going to brag on you a little bit. Bob came in. Where's that book? Did you got the book with you? All right. Bob and I had a conversation this week. Bob called me up and he says, I got a question about something. And so I, we talked on the phone. We had a, just a great conversation on the phone. At least from my perspective, it was a great conversation. And and Bob said, you know, he's excited. Guess what Bob comes in with this morning? Now, I didn't say anything about this. Bob comes in with the book, Interpreting Scripture. Because he wants to feed himself. It's not that we don't get fed by other people. By all means, tune into Joyce Meyer. By all means, tune into Charles Stanley. By all means, you know, watch the Coastlands uh, uh, broadcast online when you missed a service or something. By all means, do that. But feed yourself. Okay, James 1, verse 1. If you know James, he's, he's this man of action. Faith without works is dead, that kind of thing. He almost didn't make it, his book almost didn't make it into the Bible because some argued that he did not understand grace, that it was all works. And if, if you understand, we cannot work ourselves into salvation. Amen? We, we, it's only by God's free gift of grace. So when James talks about works, he's really talking not working for your salvation. Understand this, not working for your salvation, but it's by grace and faith that we do what we do. Because of grace and faith that we do the works that he's uh, charted out before us, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, Paul says. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. Who is the book written to? 12 tribes scattered among the nations. So essentially, he is writing to believers who are Jewish. He's writing to Christians, if you will. He's not writing to the pagans. He's not writing to people who had these um, conflicted um, understandings of God. These people understood God and they knew God. Then he says, one of my favorites 
Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Isn't that just one of the best verses in the Bible? Hey, have, you, have you had any uh, trials recently? <laughs> okay, to the four of you that are being honest today, the, 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 the joy I can see. Oh, uh, John, I see you back there, okay? Debbie, I see you back there. I, hey, it's a good time to, to receive an offering or take an auction or something, you know. Think about this. Pure joy when you face trials. This is an entire sermon in, in one verse. But pure joy when we face trials. How many of you here, when somebody tells you to do something, have to have evidence of why? All right, thank you. The lawyer's in the house, okay, great. That's good, you're, you're going in the right profession, okay. How many of you, just because daddy said so, or just because God said so, you're on board? <clears throat> okay. Now, here's what I want you to see. Whether you see the evidence of what he asks you to do or not, you are still required to do what he asks you to do. Sometimes he shows you the why or the because. In this case, he does. Everybody say wisdom. It's based on knowledge. Say knowledge. The understanding is the why. Okay, so we have knowledge that comes first. The wisdom is what we act upon based on what we know. And the understanding is when, if, we understand the why. Does that make sense? I can know that it is good to eat healthy because my mommy told me so. Eat your vegetables. That's knowledge, right? How many of your moms told you to eat, eat your vegetables? But I don't like my vegetables. Just eat them. Why? Because I said so, okay? And then we actually put that into practice. That's called wisdom. Make dietary adjustments when you're in your 40s and your 50s to watch that blood pressure go down and the cholesterol go down and the sugar go down and all that kind of things. That's wisdom. But the why, the understanding, comes when you read a study that says there were this many people that ate like this and this happened to them. They're dead. And there were this many people that made this adjustment, and guess what? They've had an extra 15 years of life that has been productive and medicine-free. Now you understand the why, which then will say, oh, I better make some changes or I'm going to die prematurely. All right? Scriptures like that as well. James says this. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, and he could have stopped right there. But I, I had this inkling that James was one of those people, inquiring minds want to know why. And so his audience, he says to them, because if you have a pen, I want you to circle the word because or highlight it on your smartphone. By the way, it is not sacrilegious to write in your Bible. I got this new Bible, and some of you have seen my new Bible. <clears throat> Christmas, uh, what was it, two years ago, three years ago? I think he was probably just two. And he had seen me writing in previous Bibles, and I turned my back, and every single page is just scribbled on and charred on because Daddy writes in his Bible, so I'm going to write in Daddy's Bible too. Underline, circle, make yourself a code, write yourself notes. My dad, when he was uh, getting a new Bible, paid me, I was probably about 12, paid me to underline and write every single note that he had had in his Bible for probably 20 years into his new Bible. Now, it was a trick. I thought I was earning money, which I did. 
But guess what else I was learning? My dad had me transcribe every note that he had written on every one of those scriptures, and I received an education that I never would have had. Isn't that interesting? That was my first Bible school. A couple years later, I was youth pastoring without a, an education. And I think about that. Dad knew that it wasn't about getting it underlined. He knew that it was about getting his son in the word. So the because here is very important. Because you know that the testing of your faith, the testing of your what? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Faith means you don't always understand why things happen the way they do and what is happening. Yes? Okay. Because you know that the te testing of your faith produces what? Patience or perseverance. It is perseverance that needs to finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Anybody ever have to persevere through a difficult time? Sometimes those times go on and on and on and on and on and on. Sometimes they're short-lived. But you persevere to the end, and it stretches your what? Faith. Your faith increases. Sometimes the longer that time is, the more your faith has to increase. Now, here is one. This next sentence is one of these scriptural paradoxes. What does he say? Lacking nothing. The very next verse says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God. Now, didn't he just say, if you get through this process of persevering, you will lack nothing? Is that right? Mature and complete, lacking nothing. The very next sentence he says, if you lack anything, come on now, didn't you just say, if you go through this, you're going to be mature and complete, lacking nothing, and now you're saying, if you lack something, you're talking out of both sides of your mouth. See, this is why the Bible contradicts itself, and I love it. It's like a puzzle. It's like looking at something and saying, I believe that this is absolute truth, and if James is writing this, and in the very next verse he contradicts himself, he's either you know, schizophrenic, or he's a poor grammar, grammar person, or there is truth here that I must discover. Now, when I discover this, this is where, as a student of the word, I ask questions. I ask questions of the text. I ask questions of other people who have read the text. I explore. God, I know the truth is here, but what this says right here in English doesn't make sense. So here's what I do. I rewrite the word of God. Now, take that one out of context on the video and publish it on Facebook, huh? This is the coolest thing. Because when you understand this passage of Scripture, here's the way I rewrite it. I start with verse 5. Now, if, if this was in, in uh, literary context or literary order, you would start out saying, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given you. If you're a writer, you know about the hook, right? When you write, you hook the reader and you pull them in so that they will read the rest of the things that you are writing about that they would not have given you a second chance after that first sentence. So here's what James does when he writes this. He writes the hook, which is actually further down in his dialogue. He says, consider it pure joy, my brothers, when you face trials of many kinds. Now, that is a hook, isn't it? That makes me rise up and say, are you kidding me? What else do you have to say that's ludicrous? Let me read on. I mean, if he would have started out in verse 5 and he would have said, if any of you, brothers, lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without... Oh, wow, this is one boring book. I don't think I'm going to finish it. But we've all been in that place. Oh, God, give me wisdom. Who's prayed the stupid prayer, God, give me wisdom? 
Now, it sounds like a great prayer, doesn't it? Oh, Lord, Lord, I need your wisdom in this situation. No, you're signing up for persecutions and trials that are going to stretch your faith so that you are mature and complete, lacking nothing. Hey, I'm not the one that wrote this, all right? I didn't write this. I'm just telling you the truth. Now, we laugh, and it's funny, but sure, it sure makes life make sense, doesn't it? <laughs> because, thank you, son, I needed that amen. But, but when we look at life and stuff happens, God's answering our prayer. Let's read on here. It says, verse 6, But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all that they do. They, they, they crack under the pressure during that time of perseverance when we are to be becoming mature and complete. And so what happens is they say, oh, God, I need wisdom. Great. By the way, continue to pray that prayer because I want you on this journey with me. Life is not easy. We don't become the best person that we can be by going through the easy street. It just doesn't happen. I don't see it scripturally. So we willfully submit to the will of God and we go through the trials and the, the testings so that we will be mature and complete. This person prays that prayer. God says, I heard you loud and clear. Here come some trials. Yes, you signed up for them. And as soon as trial shows up at the door, the person's wishy-washy. Whoa, 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 wait a second here. Wait a moment. I didn't sign up for that. I wanted wisdom, God. You sent me something else. Doesn't look like what I had anticipated here. I want wisdom. God says, yes, I know. Right address, right time. You sign for it. No, send it back, God. Send it back. I don't want it now. Wishy-washy, double-minded. Now we're trying to take back our prayer, and God says, do you want it or don't you want it? Do you want the wisdom or don't you want it? I, 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 I think he gets exasperated sometimes with us as his kids because we're so double-minded. There again, I'm not the one that wrote this. Some of you look like you're ready to shoot the messenger here, okay? I'm just saying. Let me, let me clarify something. This idea of trials, and then it goes back later on, um, verse 13, just jot this down, a temptation. And it says... No one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed. And then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. I want to contrast this trials and temptation. Now, they're similar, but the motive is completely different. Scenario. We pray to God. God, I want wisdom. God sends what? Trials. Yes. God does not send temptation. What does he send? What does the enemy send? Temptation. Here's what happens. Trials refine us, making us mature and complete. Temptations are, by design, Things that will destroy us. Now, there is a part on the temptation in the Greek. There is a part of this where uh, that same Greek word can be used in the form of a trial. But when it is used in the context of a temptation to destruction, it is not at God's hand. It's, at the, it's in the enemy's hand. And so when he tempts us, he tries to get us to fall off the wagon. He tries to get us to make an, a fatal mistake. 
Whereas the trials, God is saying, will you reach out to me? Will you reach out to me? Will you depend on my grace? Will you look to me? Here it is. I know that the wall is bigger than you can scale, but I'm here to help you over the wall. And the enemy says, oh, come, look, there's a wall over here. Let me push it over on you and crush you. Two very different things. Both are things that we will face. Some of you are facing temptation today. And there's thoughts going through your mind that the enemy is trying to take you out. If you are not grounded in the truth of the word of God, you will be in danger of falling into that temptation. Jesus was tempted 40 days and 40 nights. What did he respond with every time that the enemy brought something against him to try and get him to fall? What did he respond with? Scripture. How did he know the scripture? He memorized it as a boy. He knew the scripture. He didn't have to run and get a Bible somewhere. Of course, it was before a Bible. He didn't have to get a scroll somewhere and be like, hey, I think it's in here somewhere. Let me find it. Hold on a second there, devil. He knew it. Came back with the word of the Lord. Remember, if your foundation isn't strong, you'll never be able to become the person that God wants you to be. And the foundation comes in the truth that is the transforming truth of the word of God in your life and in my life. This, this uh, testing is like a smelting furnace. The heat gets turned up, and guess what? The dross comes to the top, and the, the master uh, goldsmith or, or metallurgist, is that a word? Scrapes it off. Testing. You know, in New York City, they have these guys selling watches, you know, on the street corner. You know those guys? They're like, wow, that's the coolest watch. It's a Rolex. It's only 20 bucks. And then you stick it up to your ear. Tick, 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 tick. Wait a second. I thought Rolex, Rolexes were fluid motion. This is a quartz Rolex. They started making Rolex in quartz. 20 bucks. When it goes tick, 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 what do you know? Might have the Rolex name on it. It's not a Rolex. <laughs> yeah, Rolex. <laughs> so, so the testing is that for strengthening us. Can I encourage you to take a really, really, really bold risk? Pray that prayer for wisdom. Sign up for some testing. Anybody go back to school after a long time of not being in school? Yeah, I did the same thing, Johnny. I'm like, this is crazy. I haven't written a paper in how long? I remember going to one of my professors at Regent. Actually, he wasn't one of my professors. He was a, he was a Foursquare guy there. And I went to his office and I said, Jim, I don't know what's going on, but this is killing me. And he prayed a prayer over my mind, and he said, God, open his mind. And it was instantly, from that time forward, I had a whole nother level of openness to receive and to give what I needed to deliver as a student. Now, I was there out of obedience, and God said, I want to refine you through the process. Let's go. I could have just sit, sat in the safe zone and been like, uh, no, not going to do that. Ooh, fear. Remember, don't be afraid. And then he says, these people that do this will persevere. They will be the ones that will become mature and complete. Guys, I don't want to stand before God at the end and have him look at me and say, you could have finished better, Durant kind of pulled up short at the end. Ugh. That'd be the worst words ever. We can look back at our lives and say, and look at those seasons where we grew in wisdom. But there isn't a one single person here that can say we are absolutely mature and complete. 
Not one of us. And so that's my goal, that I would be able to say, God, I want wisdom and I want to be mature and complete at the end. Therefore, by grace, you will take me through these trials and I will persevere. Somebody needs to shout hallelujah right there. I'm all in. I'm all in. Because I want to be mature and complete. As we, as we look at this book of James, James is just so incredibly practical. And as you read it over these next 20 days that we have left, I want you to ask the Lord, Lord, what do you have to show me that will change my life? I posted some things on Facebook. It took me like three times, and there were some grammatical errors because I couldn't get the corrected version to upload, but... There's no numbers on the side like I had, and anyway. But <laughs> here's 10 things that I just went this morning and I said 10 ways that we can progress in the truth of the Word of God that I believe will help us to grow in the area of the Word. You may say, maybe saying, man, I don't have all this time to read. I hate reading. I... Let me give you these 10 ways and plug one of them in this week to have a better foundation so that you'll be able to persevere in a stronger way. Number one, take a 30-day challenge to listen only to Christian music. Now, before you say, Pastor, there's no such thing as Christian music. Yeah, there's no such thing as a Christian T-shirt or a Christian bookstore. There's Christian people, okay? Right, you're right. But you know what I mean when I use the term Christian music. We listen to something that's going to edify our spirit. Do it for 30 days and see how much of the word you get in you. I had this song stuck in my head. Now, it was not a, it was not a bad song. It was, a, it was by a Christian artist. But it was one of those songs that was relatively benign. You know what I mean by those? It's, it's kind of like, it's catchy. But it says really nothing in the catchphrase. And so it's going over and over and over in my head. I can't get it out of my head for two and a half days. Praise God for praise and worship this morning, and I have some new songs that are going to be going into my head again. So take that challenge. You'll get a ton of the word as you're just listening to it over and over in song. Start a reading plan. You got this in your bulletin, or go online, go to the, the Coastlands website, and, and just say, for 30 days, I'm going to read this, and I'm going to ask God to speak to me. Give it a try. Join a soap group. Now, what is a soap group? It's on the Facebook page, but I'll tell you. Scripture. We start with the word. What's the second one, Sharon? Observation, application, and prayer. So essentially what we do is you start with the scripture. You can use the, one of the verses out of the, out of the daily reading, and you say, wow, that is a cool verse. What do I observe out of it? Really simple. You make that observation and you write it down. I thought it was pretty cool that God gives us the opportunity to persevere. That's your observation. Pretty cool. Now, the application says, wow, I'm really having a tough time persevering right now. I feel like quitting. I feel like giving up. And there's a lot of things that would point me in that direction. That's your application. And then the prayer would be, Lord, I need your help to persevere. I need your grace poured out into this. Very simple. Three lines. The verse, the observation, the application, prayer. So try that. And you can join a group Thursdays at 8 o'clock right here at Dunkin' Donuts. My favorite one. Tuesdays at what time, Luke? 5.30. Uh-huh. I'll be there on my bicycle. 5.30 a.m. Download and use the Bible app. How many of you have a Bible app on your smartphone? Man, that is so good. I go to the gym, plug it in, listen for an hour. I get half the New Testament in my brain before 6 o'clock in the morning. That is fantastic. It's a great way to start the day. Number five, get on a text chain that sends out a daily verse. Antonio, stand up. Phil, stand up. 
J.D. Bullock, if you're watching online, stand up. Get on these guys' text chain because they will send out a verse of the day off the Bible app usually, and then there's some interaction. Phil has one that interacts with guys that are out in Salem, and you go back and forth. You got the Tuesday night group. You guys, you know, there's stuff flying around all day, all day being encouraged, okay? Thank you, guys. Another one of my favorites, number six, is get up early. And read your Bible. And T Antonio was just, he was just telling me God's been working on him about getting up early and some of the things that God's been showing him, and it's encouraging. But for those of you, number seven, that don't like to get up early, you can read the Psalms to fall asleep at night, okay? Or whatever else you want to read. I don't know. I, I hit the pillow. There's no Psalms. There's no Proverbs. It's Zs. That's all I... When he was bumping me last night, I was trying to stay awake, and I'm snoring over there. I'm going... <laughs> Number eight, yes, you were. Read a devotional like the Daily Bread. You can get it for free. Go to, um, oh, it just slips me right now. Um, who puts out the Daily Bread? Radio Bible Class. Yep, Radio Bible Class. Uh, and you can get it mailed to you free. It's a little print journal. You can do that over your lunch break. Um, read a few verses with the kids over dinner or breakfast and ask them what they think. Now, that's a novel idea, discipling your kids. Amazing. Here's another one that has been very beneficial for me, and that is writing your favorite scriptures on a card and placing them in important places for you to memorize. Pull them out of my pocket, three by five cards. God, what's the word of God say? And getting it over and over and over and over again in my spirit. And can I just encourage you today to do something in your journey to be able to move forward in this foundation of the Word of God. To persevere in the Word. To persevere to move forward. To let it take root so that when the trials come, notice I didn't say if, when the trials come, you are the survivor tree, as it were. You're not crushed. You're not broken down. So how are you going to choose to progress? Progression is not automatic. It is a very calculated job for us to move forward. It takes work to get out of bed 30 minutes early and read the Word. It takes discipline to say, I'm going to listen to something that I'm not normally accustomed to be listening to instead of listening to garbage. It takes discipline. It takes work. It takes work to disciple your family in the word. Parents, it takes work. It's not easy. They whine. They complain. Trust me. I'm not going to mention any names, but trust me. And, and it's, it's a regular habit that we get into. It has to be. So how are you going to progress today? How are you going to persevere today? I, I feel like there's some people here that are, that are saying, you know what, I'm, I'm at, my, at, my, at the end of my rope. And I'm, I'm questioning this whole thing. And I believe the Lord would say to you that today is the day where he wants to kind of <clears throat> take that tree up from its roots nurture it, and then bring it back and set it back in a new place for fruitfulness. And he's going to do it if you'll allow him to do it. Persevere through the trials. It's not God who's trying to take you out, but it very well could be God who's allowing you to go through trials so that you will persevere being mature and complete. So, Bonnie, as you, uh, as you come to, uh, to lead us in our, uh, in our closing, uh, I want to I put two challenges out. If you say, I want to grow, maybe in one of these areas, it doesn't have to be one of these ten, there's many other things that you can do, but I want to grow in this area of um, foundation in the Word, that I want to take some small step to move forward in this area, I'd like you to just raise your hand right where you are. 
and you say, you know what, this is, this is a goal that I have. And, and, and you know, you, say, you may say, man, I've done this a thousand times before and I do it for a week and then boom, I, I fail again. No, don't look at it as a failure. Look at it as your progress and your maturing process. I'd rather have somebody recommit to do something a thousand times than to give up. Did you hear that? You know, if you got, for the people that are going to be baptized next week, I'll dunk somebody again and again and again if they need to, if they're making a fresh commitment to Jesus, hey, let's do it. Really? Like, what's it going to hurt to make a fresh commitment to Jesus? Well, they did it before. Well, yeah, I'll do it again. And I want, to, I want to encourage you in that. And I, I want some testimonies. By the way, do we have any, do we have a testimony? I want to give away a t-shirt. Do we have a testimony as we close this of somebody who feels like you've made significant progress in this area of the word of God? Maybe in the last several months or, or where you just feel like, man, you know, I am really, and you're not bragging on yourself. You're just saying I'm making progress. This is what worked for me. Is, is there somebody that would be bold enough to testify? I'll get the microphone here. Terry, come on. I went to church for um, two years before I came to Coastlands in a different state. And I did it because I knew it was the right thing to do. And I would get my daily 30 minutes of pastor, not this one, <laughs> and then I'd leave. And life goes on as normal, and then i do it again next week. And... And I didn't grow, and not at all, and trial hit me. And I wondered why after it, I made really bad decisions. And then I came here. And I resisted all of this for the first, probably six to nine months, every bit of it. But I still came, I was faithful, I still came. They told me to keep coming, so I did. <laughs> and wow, I actually, um, the beginning of this past year, so like January, I was like, I never do good on New Year's resolutions or anything, but I'm going to commit to reading the Bible every day. Or if I can't make it in that day, I'm going to make it up. Whatever was on the schedule, I'm going to do it. I'm going to fill in one page a day. That's my goal. One page a day, one scripture a day. And I filled one journal throughout the course of this past year. So now we're coming up on October and, um, you know, halfway through my second journal and, you know, I've missed a couple days, but I just got back up and I made those scriptures up and, you know, vacations happen that kind of thing. So I'm really impressed with myself because I feel like, um, you know, I get up in the morning and I listen to some worship music. So maybe three songs and then I read our reading plan. It's simple to follow. And then, um, I, I know there's many people here that can testify they've seen me grow. So I encourage you, if you're struggling to um, read the Bible, I feel like I graduated with a bachelor's degree, but this thing is Greek to me. Um, then grab a soap group um, and uh, get people to help you. And, um, you know, come, come see me. I'll, I'll do what I can to help you. <laughs> so thanks. If you, if you raised your hand, and, and you want to grow in this area. I want you to just stand. And I want, Terry, I'm going to stretch you a little bit. And I'm going to ask you to pray for him. Okay? <laughs> and the testing of your faith develops perseverance, girl. You can do it. Would you stand? If, if you raised your hand and you said, I, I want to grow in some way in this area of the, of the study of the word. And, and just receive that impartation as she prays over you. Because it is not something that you have done in your own strength, Terry. It's clearly the grace of God. And I want you to impart that grace right now to these who are standing, okay? Dear Father, for all the people in this church that are wanting to know your word more and become more grounded, and when those trials happen, they have, they, they have that word and they can go back to those scriptures that are so powerful and can guide them through and can resist the temptations that are definitely thrown at us in those trials and those, those are going to happen. 
And um, I just pray that when they open their Bible and they're looking at it and it's, it does seem foreign to them that you open their minds and, and um, deliver them the, you know, patience to sit there with it in that hard time when it starts. And then, you know, just a little bit more and a little bit more, you give them understanding and, um, you know, they give them faith to get through and just a little bit more every single day. And you they grow in your word. And, um, you know, I, I pray this for you, all you people that want to grow in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you're here and, and you say, uh, oh, please, get it, get a T-shirt. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wear it boldly. Um, as we dismiss, I ask a few of the prayer team members if you would just hang around and if you're here and you say, you know, I'm, I'm going through a situation that I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble persevering in or I need somebody to stand with me, I want you to just come and avail yourself of the power of prayer because we've got some powerful people here that know their God and are able to stand with you and say, you know what? Our God is able. Encourage you. Build you up. Particularly if you're, if you're part of the prayer team and you say, man, that just resonates with me. I want you to just get out of your seat right now and just come up so that we have people available. And I want to send you out with this blessing. And it's a blessing to, to persevere because there's a lot of hope in it. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. We say amen and so be it.